Hi guys, hope you're doing good. In this video, we're going to learn about recursion in Go programming language. As many other programming languages use recursion, Go programming also have recursion. Now, recursion means a function calling itself repeatedly until some base condition is satisfied. Let me give an example to make you understand recursion. Let me take the universal example that everyone takes because it is easy for people to understand recursion when we take this example. I'm going to take an example to find the factorial of n number. So when I say factorial of n, n factorial, I say n factorial, that is n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 into n minus 3, that goes on up to 1. Right. So I'm going to do the process of multiplication repeatedly by decrementing the value by 1. For example, if I have 5 as my example, I'll say 5 factorial, that is 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 and finally into 1. Now here you can see the value 5 is getting reduced by 1 every time. So I'm going to do the process repeatedly by reducing the value 1. So when I want to do some process repeatedly again and again, I'll be using recursion and there are many other uses for recursion like if we go for any complex problem that can be solved with the help of recursion. So let me give this example to find the factorial of n number. Let me take the important things that is required for any Go programming language that is package main, import fmt and function main. Let me create the recursive function. I'll say func fact of n, let it be an integer and let it return integer as well. Now here, as the universal fact knows that the factorial of 1 and factorial of 0 is 1. So let me say if my n is 1 or my n is 0, that is that the value which I am getting, either 1 or 0 for n, I am going to return 1. Let me take it here, I will say fmt dot fmt ln, let me call the function fact and pass n. So let me get input for n here first. I'll say for n int. I'll say fmt dot scan and person n. So I'm getting input for n and I'm calling the function. So whenever a function call happens, a stack frame will be created for every function call, right? So once the function call happens, there will be a stack frame created and whatever information that I want will get stored there and every time the function call happens, there will be a stack frame created. So whenever this function call happens, there will be a stack frame that will be created. For example, if my n is 5, and here it will be like, I'm calling the function fact and I'm passing 5. So for this, there will be a stack frame created and it comes here. What is my n now? n is 5, right? So it comes here, n is equal to 1, n is equal to? 0 the condition is not true so it will go to the else part and here I'll say written n into fact of n minus 1. Now what I'm doing is that I'm doing a multiplication and then calling the function right so I'm calling the function itself right so the same function which is calling by itself that's called this process is called as recursion whenever a function call happens within the function that is the same function call right wherever I, where I am right I am, I am in fact and I'm calling the same function, not the different function. If I'm calling a different function, that's okay, no problem. But if I'm going to call the same function or a function calling itself, then this process is called as recursion. Now, what I'm doing here is recursion. So when I say fact of n minus 1, this n into fact of n minus 1. Now, what happens whenever a function call happens, right? Whenever a recursive function call happens, the statement which along with it will get stored inside the stack frame, right? So it will be like 5 into fact of 4. These things will be stored inside my stack frame. So let me uh, give you an uh, explanation of it, right? So what, what is my first function call? My first function call is fact of 5. But as for my example here, that is 5. So let me take fact of 5. And here I say n into fact of n, that is 4 minus 1. 4 mi sorry, 5 minus 1 is 4, correct? What is that? Fact of n minus 1. So this Whenever there is a recursive function call, immediately the statement next to it or statement along with the function call will be stored inside my stack frame. Now, now this, things will get, this thing will get stored inside my stack frame. That is n. What is my n now? 5. 
5 into fact of n minus 1 that is fact of 4. Now here again this fact of 4 is a function call. So whenever there is a function call, now let me put return here as well. Return also there, right? So return n into fact of n minus 1. So now when I say fact of 4, that is a function call again. So when there is a function call, again a function will be called and there will be a stack frame created. So this will be frame 0. This is frame 0, correct? So this is the uh, stack frame 0, right? This is stack frame 0 and again the stack frame 1 will be created here. So fact of 4 is a function call, correct? Fact of 4 is a function call. Again, the function will be called here. n will become 4 now, right? So whenever this function call happens, this function will be called and n will become 4. Now here it is. Now it comes here. n equal to 1, n equal to 0. Condition false. It will come to the else part. Here I say return 4 into fact of 4 minus 1. That is 3, right? Now here again, this fact of 3 is a function call, correct? Fact of 3 is a function call. So when my fact of 3 is a function call, again a new stack frame will be created and this is for fact of 3. It comes here, my n will become 3. Now whenever the function call happens, n will become 3. That is 3, this condition fails. It will come to the else part and here I will say return 3 into fact of n minus 1, that is 2. So when I say fact of 2, again this fact of 2 is a function call, fact of 2 is a function call. So now this function will be called again, the fact function will be called again, a new stack frame will be created, let's say frame 3, right, here n will become 2. Now it comes here, n is equal to 1, n is equal to 0, condition false, it will go to the else part and I will say return. 2 into fact of 1. Now fact of 1 again is a function call. New stack frame will be created. Now here I will say fact of 1. Now fact of 1 again is a function call. It comes here. n becomes 1. Now here n equal to 1. Condition true. So when my condition is true, I will say return 1. Right? return 1. Whenever I say return 1, the value will go to the function call, right? Whenever there is a return value, right, I am returning 1 from here. So when I say return 1, the value will be returned back to the function call. Where is the function call of fact 1? The function call of fact 1 is here. This will be replaced with the value which is written. What is the value written? 1. Now 2 into 3 is 2. 2 will be returned back to the function call fact of 2, right? This here it is actually returning 2. So when I say return 2, it will go to the function call of fact 2. This is the function call of fact 2 and this will be replaced by 2. So 2, 3, 3, 2 is or 6. It means that return 6, correct. So when I say return 6, where is the function call? Fact of 3. Fact of 3 is here. It will go here and replace it with 6. So whenever a function call happens and there is a return, the return value will be returning back to the function call. Now this gives you 24. Now, the value 24 is processed and I say return, return is also there. So when I say return 24, it will go back and replace the value where the function call happens. So function call is happening here and this will be replaced with 24. Now 24 is 5 into 4 is 120, sorry 5 into 24 is 120. The value 120 will be returned back to fact of 5, fact of 5, where is fact of 5? Here. So this place will be replaced with 120. So it means that print 120. This is how the recursion works. Whenever there is a recursive call or whenever there is a function call, the function call will go and create a stack frame and the process will happen in the stack frame. Whatever you are creating a variable or anything will get stored in the stack frame. Now here the same way the values and uh, everything is getting stored in the stack frame. Since there is a return, it will go back to the place where the function call happens. The same way it's happening here as well. So after completing all the process, the value is getting stored in this place. Value is getting returned to this place and you will be getting the value 120 for the fact of 5. So let me save this and run it for you. Here I'll say go run recursion example and let me give 5, we're getting 120. Let me give 4, 
I'll give 24, right? Let me give uh, 6, I'll get 720. Like this, like a recursion means a function calling itself until the base condition is satisfied. So once this base condition is satisfied, it will try to pop out the values, right? You should be knowing what is stack, right? So it will pop out the value, right? The values will be popped out and there will be nothing like once everything is over, everything will be popped out and finally 120 will be there. That will also be written and the value will be popped out from the stack. Hope you got this guys. I'm done with this video. If you have any doubts or queries on recursion, please comment in the comment section. I'll definitely get back to you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.